that everyone was free. Everyone was created equal. Everyone has the right to pursue their own dreams. And that our nation was founded on those ideals. But not all of them came back. Some remained, never to go home, never to see their families. And some, we lost this side of the field of battle. They were sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, greatly loved. They charged forward for honor and peace and freedom. We acknowledge the empty space where we want them to be. Together we pay sincere tribute to those who fought for us. Those we remember. Those we love. Veterans here today, would you do me a favor and stand your feet? I want to honor them. And now as you guys are still standing, would everybody stand to your feet with me real quick? And we're just going to honor those that have uh, fallen, those that have given the ultimate and paid the ultimate price. And um, so I'm going to just give us a, just a moment of silence, just for a moment, and then we will, uh, then I will pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and God, I thank you so much for our military. I thank you for the men and women who give every day and who give in such a way that we, so that we can stand in freedom. And Father, I thank you for the families, for the husbands and the wives and the sons and the daughters who have lost one of theirs. And I just ask for your grace and your mercy and your peace and your comfort over them today. God, I, I just ask that the, for the empty spaces that are in the homes and at the job and the different places that they interacted, I just ask, God, that you would come in, Holy Spirit, you would come in like a flood, that you would fill those empty spaces and that you would truly become their dad, their, the one that they need uh, so close near them, their husband, and that you would just be that and, and give them the comfort they need. And Lord, in the decision-making processes, there's not that one there to bounce stuff off of anymore. And I just ask that you would just help them in those times. God, I just ask that you would just pour out your spirit upon our service men and women and that God that you would just bless them and bless them indeed that God that you would put your loving arms around them that you'd fill them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding that those that do not know you that they would come to know you that you would draw them into you and into a close intimate relationship with you those that know you God that you would raise them up with your grace and your strength you would raise them up, God, with courage and boldness and that you would speak in and through them. God, we thank you so much for them and we thank you for the ones that have gave their whole life so that we could have, so that we could walk in freedom and have freedom here in this place. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to pray uh, for the uh, 1040 window, and as we pray for the 1040 window, I'd want to, uh, if you don't have this, this is great to get, um, there's an app out there, it's for the, un it's the, called Joshua Project, and it's the unreached of the day, and it'll pop up on your phone, and it'll tell you the different unreached people groups, and so like today, for instance, the unreached people group that we're praying for is the, is the Rashput which is, it's not really a people group as much as it is a class of people within Pakistan. 
and they are a class, they are the elite ruling class in Pakistan. And, uh, and so today we're going to pray for them as well as we're going to continue to pray for Anand in India here where this black uh, one is. We pray for the 1040 window every day or set our alarms for 1040 in the morning and some of us do it as well as at 1040 at night to remind us of this area of the world that is 10 degrees north and 40 degrees north of the equator and it stretches all the way from the tip of West Africa all the way into East Asia. And it's an area of the world where the poorest of poor live, an area of the world where those who have yet to hear the good news of Jesus Christ one time in a clear and irrelevant way that gives them the opportunity to either to accept or to reject Christ. And so we're going to pray for uh, these two different uh, people today. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for this area of the world. And God, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you would come in and stir this, pe this place. And that, God, I think about, think about these people in Pakistan, the elite ruling class, the Rashput. God, I just ask in the name of Jesus that you would just come in like a flood, bring dreams and visions, God, as they are a part of the elite ruling class, that you will knock down and you will cause hum humility to come, God. You will knock them to their knees, God, and they would see that you are king and that you are Lord. And that, God, that you would cause them to reach out to those that are underneath them and other classes. And, God, we also pray for Anand and Vijaya in India. Lord, as they celebrated their wedding anniversary this last week, God, I just ask that you will bless them, bless them indeed, pour out your spirit upon them, God. God, raise them up with wisdom. As India has, has, has re-elected um, the same government that, they, that has been harsh on Christianity, and God, I just ask in the name of Jesus, place a hedge of protection about them. Place a hedge of protect, protection about your pastors. Give them creative wisdom to know how to propagate your good news to all peoples in that area. And that, God, you will fill them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Give them strategies, Father God, that are from heaven. And that they would be able to execute well in order to be able to see this nation of India reached in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So, um, so today we're going to be talking, we're going to continue on in regards to our second part of the series about hearing God's voice. But as I was thinking about this Memorial Day, I have to say that I am thankful and thankful for the freedoms that have been given to us by all the courageous men and women who are still fighting today and those who have given their lives um, and those who have fought and um, who are now in civilian life. And I'm thankful um, that we can actually celebrate tomorrow. When, when I go out to the park tomorrow, and we all go out to the park tomorrow, I want to encourage you, come out to the park tomorrow, bring family, bring friends, bring frenemies. Okay, just bring enemies, I don't care. Just bring them all out to the park. And the reason why is that, is that it, we're celebrating the opportunity to actually be able to be out there in freedom. Being, can you, I mean, seriously, I mean, we're not getting arrested, right? We're able to go out there, have a great day, cook some of our favorite stuff, right, and be able to get out there and just have fun and enjoy. And so to, to me, I am so grateful and so thankful for this. I'm thankful that we're free. How many are great, thankful that we're free? How many are thankful that there's no slavery anymore, right? And how many think that we've made strides in regards to all of that from, from years ago? And so I am so thankful that I'm thankful that we're able to have uh, open and fair elections, I mean, you know, there's many places around the world that when they have an election, man, riots break out, all sorts of craziness happens. Um, and I know that, that our elections sometimes are kind of, you know, I know the Russians invade it all the time, but <laughs> I'm just saying that, um, <laughs> that, that even though we have these elections, they are open and fair. And how many are thankful that you can vote? And if you don't vote, you should vote, yeah. right? And a lot of people, oh, I don't vote because I don't believe in, hey, listen, the only way this stuff gets changed is if we stand up and we vote and we... Many places around the world, they don't even get a chance to vote. It took India about three months, two or three months to vote in India because of all the constraints and all this other kind of stuff that ends up happening uh, within some of these, within these elections. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that, that, I'm, that we're, if I was ever to be, you know, arrested for anything, right, that I'm able to have a fair election. I mean, not a fair election, but a fair, <laughs> fair election. <laughs> Elect me, because um, <laughs> I'm a politician and I got arrested. Um, so, just kidding. Um, but to be able to have a fair trial, how many think that's really important, right? Uh, how many, here's another one. I'm thankful that I can have a gun. Yeah, 
I know a lot of people, some people are like, man, I don't like guns, whatever. But hey, listen, the reason that we were able to have guns is for the Second Amendment. It was so that government couldn't raise up beyond us, right? And they, they couldn't suppress the people. And if there was enough individuals that had guns, the government would be cautious in regards to trying to put dictates on a people, right? And so guns are awesome. Um, I will just say that. Guns are awesome, okay? Did I say that? Guns are awesome. I love, I think guns are really cool. I even like, I even, I'm on Facebook too. Guns are awesome. Um, I, I like, I, I like shooting guns. I mean, there was this one time I, I took Seth and we went out to uh, the range out here. What's that guy? Dragon Man's. We went out to Dragon Man. So if you, Dragon Man. Um, anyway, so we went out to Dragon Man and, uh, and we were shooting out there, but they had a day where you could actually pay X amount of dollars, you could pay uh, a small fee and you could shoot like all like 50 cows and, Whoa. and Uzis and all, it was just, I mean, when you feel that, it's just really cool. Anyway, so um, I think it's, so did I say I like guns? I like guns. Um, so free to speak up and to speak out. I, how many think that that's awesome, that we have the freedom to speak up and now some, you know, everybody has the freedom to do it. Even knuckleheads have the freedom to do it. Isn't that amazing, right? So we have the freedom to speak up and speak out. We have the freedom to assemble, and we have the freedom to be Christians. How many know that is huge? I mean, how many, you know, there's around the globe, different places that we go. Um, it's just, it's, it's amazing when you begin to start watching some of the things that are happening around the globe. And, the, and we have the ability to actually be Christian and have the freedom to speak that out without being oppressed. Now, I admit, here in the United States, how many know that's getting more and more? It's getting more and more restrained. They're trying to push it on every level. They're trying to push it at the college levels. You know, someone who wants to have the freedom to assemble, and they're not, and, but they're Christian, they can't assemble. But they, if they were some other group, they can. And so there's, but there's, what's great about it, we have, we have different groups out there, you know, fighting for those freedoms um, today in order to be able to make sure that that happens. And so, um, so that's hugely important. So as I think about this Memorial Day, I think about how well-trained also, I think about our military and how well-trained our military force is. Best in the world. Some of the most amazing people. Some of the most amazing out, I mean, groups that are there. there. I mean, we, we, you hear about the, the elite ones of the SEAL teams and all this kind of stuff, but how many know that all of our military is very well-trained and very well-disciplined and it's the best in the world? And when I think about that, I think about... Um, that amazing discipline and that, dis- that discipline just didn't come by happenstance. How many know? How many know it, it, the, slack got, the slack got jerked out of them early on? And how many know that they had to learn how to be able to, when they heard something, they did what they heard? Their commanding officer would speak something, and when their commanding officer would speak something, they would do what the commanding officers told them to do, without question. How many know that that would be a ragtag group of people, right, if there was a commanding officer and it was debated every time? I mean, think about it. I mean, you're in a military combat zone, and someone says, I need you to go right or left or this or that or whatever, and someone goes, but why? Why would I go right? I mean, I, I think I, I feel like I'd like to go left. <laughs> How many know, could you imagine that military force? I mean, it would be like some of the most comedic thing you've ever seen in your life. I mean, you would have people running all over the place, doing their own thing, because they feel like that was the best place for them to go. How many know that our feelings aren't always true? I acknowledge you have feelings, and I've been told this before, that yes, I acknowledge your feelings. You do have feelings. But I also have to acknowledge, though, the truth about feelings, and that feelings aren't always truth. And so we have to really be careful in regards to what we feel, right? So I'm going to talk today about hearing God's voice. I was sitting in my, I was sitting in my uh, kitchen one night, and we were having this debate about feelings. And this debate about feelings, and that someone says, but I feel this. I need you to acknowledge that, that, that you hear me, that I feel it. I said, I hear you, I feel it. But I am also telling you the truth. I can, because I can go along with you and, and play the psychologist on psych, and, and, and go all day long, oh, I am so sorry you feel that. Or do you want to hear truth? Some of you have been in my counseling sessions before. And um, <laughs> that's why I don't do many of them. And um, <laughs> I always try to find more mercy motivated people to do those things, right? Um, because cause in, cause when, cause I, I'm just one of those guys, I'm like, I'm like, listen, let's just, let's just do truth. 
and then we'll figure out the rest later and hopefully your feelings will come along. Um, but how many know sometimes it's better to go ahead and step on a feeling? Oh, stepped on a feeling. Oh, that's not a song. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> stuck on a feeling. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, how many know it's better to go ahead and step on a feeling than it is for us, than, than it is for you to feel that and be in denial and, and live a lie? Right? And so it's really, really important that when we take a look at some of these things, we don't want to be those that are led by feelings, but we want to be those that are led by truth. And sometimes the truth hurts, even if it's in love. Anybody ever had truth in love, but it still hurt, right? Why? Because we have, there's certain things that we have to do. And, go, and we have some people, no, you're not going to say. So, so the troops, though, learn to listen and obey what their commanding officers have to say. So the Bible uses this military analogy when talking about um, living for Christ. In 2 Timothy 2.4, he says, Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. This word tied up means to be entangled, to, to weave, to entwine, or to involve. That's what that word tied up means. And sometimes, sometimes we think tied up means to be tied bound, but tied up actually is interwoven. In other words, don't allow the world, don't allow the things of this world around you to be intertwined in your life. How many know that there's a lot of Christians out there, we call them CBNO, Christian by name only. How many know there's a lot of Christianity that goes on out there, and they're always trying to dabble in the world, see how close I can get to the world in order to be able to live out this life? And how, how many know that that's not really, right? If I'm passionate for Jesus, what am I? I'm, I want to draw near to Jesus, right? I want to draw near to Jesus. I don't want to draw near to the world. And so oftentimes this, this word entwined or to be entangled or to be ensnared is another great word for this. The verse also alludes to that notion that we're to be set apart. We're to be different, right? We're not supposed to look like the world does. And Romans 12, 1 and 2 talks about that. We, we know it so well. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because, uh, because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that will be, that will be found acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Verse 2 says this, don't copy the behavior of the customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. And so when we talk about this verse in, in 2 Timothy 2, 4, it's the same thing. Don't get entwined. Don't get ensnared, but rather what? To be set apart, look different, taste different, Right? I mean, how many know that if it looks like the world, tastes like the world, smells like the world, it's probably the world, right? If it looks like a Christian, tastes like a Christian, acts like a Christian, speaks like a Christian, right? It smells like a Christian. How many know it's probably a Christian? And so that's, the, that's what we want. That, that's what our desire is, is that we would walk that way. And that this would be something that's not a Sunday thing. How many know there's a lot of Christian, Christians on Sunday? And then during the rest of the week, it looks like something totally different. And it's like, man, this is a 24-7 gig, right? Because, man, he bought me. He paid the ultimate price for me. He laid down his life for me. And therefore, I desire him. I want him, and I want to live like he wants me to live. So we don't want to, by participating like the world participates, it slows us down, and it will not be impactful, and we won't be impactful, and it will oftentimes distract us. How many, how many ever felt that before? right? You kind of feel sludgy. Anybody ever felt sludgy before? And if you start to analyze why you feel sludgy, you begin to start discovering, hmm, you know what? I haven't prayed this week, right? You start to feel a little sludgy. It's like, hmm, I haven't, you know, I haven't read the Bible. Does anybody ever felt that way? It's like, man, I haven't read in a long time, and I really need to just read the Bible again, man. And you read the Bible, and there's something that happens. You may not necessarily knowledge-wise got something out of it, but there's something that actually happened while you were reading the Bible. Why? Because the Bible is what? Active and living and sharper than any truth. Right? It's, it's, it's a breathing, living document. It's not, just, it's not just words on a page, and it transforms us. And there's something that triggers inside of it. Going down the road, listening to Scripture, right? It's like there's something that that triggers or something that does something inside of us. And, and so if you ever feel sludgy, it's probably the word 
It's probably not some time in worship, probably not some time in prayer, that kind of stuff. And so just do it. And all of a sudden you'll be like, and it'll, it'll give you a little pick me up, right? And it, it's amazing how that stuff works. So we don't want to be sludgy. We don't want to be slowed down like the world. So as a soldier, the best way not to become tied up or ensnared is to listen, to hear, to obey his or her commanding officer. So we need to hear God's voice above all. So last week we started this whole message on on, on hearing God's voice. And, and we, we discovered that, how many of you in this room, you want to hear God's voice better? I want to hear His voice better. I want to hear it more. I don't want to hear it less, but I want to hear it more often, and I want to hear it, it better. And we talked about that Jesus, we talked about that, that scripture where Jesus was healing the blind man with spit and dirt. So if you didn't hear it last week, you might want to go back and hear it. So we talked about spit and dirt, and we talked about how Jesus used His spittle often in, in healing, in the healing process, from healing a deaf and mute guy. I mean, it's just really kind of cool. But, deaf, but how many know that using spit and dirt to put on someone's eyes, you need to make sure you're hearing right? Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, hold on, let me give this a whirl. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, nope, didn't work. You know what I'm saying? How many know that, that you don't want that? You want to be able to make sure that you're hearing clearly of what he's saying. And and then we learned about the importance of hearing God's voice. It's important for us, me as an individual. It's important for my family that I hear God's voice. It's important for my community that I hear God's voice, right? It's important for you to hear God's voice for you. It's important for you to hear God's voice for your family. It's important for you to hear God's voice for your community. It's important for you to hear God's voice because that's the only way this region here is going to be transformed. Guys, if you and I hear God's voice and act on what we hear, how many know that this region will be changed? We're not just here as a church, as a body, just to kind of come in and soak and go, that was a great day, check the box, right? That's not who we are. This church is not that. This church is, hey, how do we get out there? How do we do the stuff? That's why we do what we do. That's why, we're, that's why we do the 4th of July parade coming up, by the way. So if you're not involved with that, get involved with it some way or another. You can help build it. You can help create and come up with creative ideas for it. You can help put together all the little pe- the nip. There's all these pieces that have to be put together for it. Or you just show up for that day and help us out on that day. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can participate with that. But the reason why do we do the 4th of July parade? It's not just because we're amazing and we win every year. <laughs> that is the truth. But we, we do it so that way, that way we could actually participate in the community and actually reach into the community and give life into the community. So as us, as we sit there and as we, as we soak in the word, we need to be those that deliver it as well. So I need to hear God's voice for our community. I need to hear God's voice for our nation. And I need to hear God's voice for the world. And so do you. This is not just a pastoral thing. This is a disciple, Christ follower thing. That's what this is. And that's what we need. We need answers for healing. We need, we need comfort and peace. There's people that are near you, that are far from God, that need you to have an answer. Have you ever been in this position where someone, like a teacher, called on you or whatever, right? And you didn't have the answer? How many of that stunk? Right? Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, right? How many of it would be great if we had the answer? You're in the grocery store, someone you can sense something's happening in someone's life, and you can say, Are, is everything okay? And they're like, well, matter of fact. <laughs> right? And, and, and all of a sudden, you have something. You have an answer for them. You have something to give to them. And so that's what we want you to do. That's what God wants you to do. So what do we need to hear God's voice? We learned last week, there's a couple things, two things. One is you need to have the desire, you need to have the want to. In other words, God, I want to hear your voice. How many know that's a good start? I want to hear your voice, right? Because if you're like going, well, I don't even know if anybody can really hear God's voice, right? How many know you're not going to hear God's voice? Well, I've never heard God's voice before. Well, have you desired to hear God's voice before? Well, not really, but if he's going to speak, he can just speak. I mean, because if he wants to speak, he can just, I mean, he's God. Stop it. Stop with the nonsense. Listen, he wants you to desire to hear him, right? So, walk, so the desire to hear him. The next thing was truth. 
In order to hear God's voice, we need the truth. In other words, we need to have the Word of God in us. How many know it's important to have the Word of word in us? The Word is our anchor. The Word is what helps us so that when you hear God's voice, we can go, yep, that's God's voice. Nope, that's definitely not God's voice. Because when the truth is in us, we're going to understand and know the character of God. If you understand the character of God, then you're going to be able to, when you're hearing, you're going to, yep, that's His character. Absolutely, He would do it that way. Because He loves me, right? So, today I'm going to give you five points on how to hear God's voice. So let's talk about this. So after we've got the desire, we're getting the truth of God in us, then there's these five things that, that I believe the Lord showed me in regards to how, how do I hear God's voice? What, what is it that causes me to even hear God's voice? And so I'm, I'm just going off of a personal vantage point here. And one is, number one is take time to listen. Listening. Spend time in the Word and worship. In other words, pull away a little bit. Get into, get into a space where you can hear God's voice. For me, oftentimes, my travels, I travel to Denver several times a week, and so oftentimes that space for me is just time just to kind because of, I'm not doing anything except driving down the road, right? And, uh, and so hearing God's voice in the middle of that time. It could be at home, it could be on a walk, it could be on the gym, or there's times, how many have ever heard God's voice in the shower? Right? I mean, it's like it's those times, those moments you're you're away where you're alone with you and God. So it's not it's not a lot of noise coming in. It's not even you don't even have worship music on sometimes. You don't even have anything on sometimes. It's just that alone space with God, and it's like, and all of a sudden you can hear Him. But how many know that hearing God and listening to God is not the same thing? In other words, I can hear something. Husbands and wives, ever heard your spouse say something? Come on. But you weren't listening? Come on. Every one of you have done it. It's like you heard what they said, but you didn't listen to what they said. How many know there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? So hearing and listening are two different things. So listening and hear, listening is not based on, number one, emotion. Listening is not based on emotion. It's like, for instance, well, but he's such a really cute guy. I mean, my heart pitter patters when I get near him every time. Yeah, but he's a jerk. You just see what I'm saying? Anybody, I was in high school, and as always, there was, these girls would always date these idiot jerk guys. Anybody, right? And I'm like going, I'm the nicest guy around. Right? I was really nice. I was nice. Stop it. Um, so <laughs> now you're. A, now she's a sister-in-law. Um, so. <laughs> so it's not based upon emotion. It's not based upon that feeling again. And coming back to that, it's not based upon feeling. It's not based upon emotion. So listening to God isn't. Now, can emotions be involved? Absolutely. But emotions don't lead the hearing. Did you get that? Emotions don't lead the hearing. Emotions can be tied into it. How many know that sometimes God speaks, I might cry, I may laugh, I may whatever, right? Those are emotional feelings. But it's because he spoke and those things happened. It's not because those things happened, therefore I think it's God. Okay? So we got to make sure we parse this out and understand it. And then also... Listening is not based on your situation. So, here's what I mean by that. Some people, right, because there's this spot in the Bible where this guy ends up going, God, I don't think I'm hearing your voice, so I'm going to put this cloth on the ground, and if everything, if it rains on that cloth and everything else is dry, then I know it's of you. So what happened? cloth gets wet, he wrings it out, right, and kind of stuff. Okay, 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 okay. Well, if the cloth is dry and then everything else around it is wet, then I'll believe you, okay? Here's the problem with all this. Well, number one is, how many know there wasn't a lot of trust going on there that he was hearing God's voice? Uh-huh. So how many know that's not a great example to have hearing God's voice, number one? Number two, here's the other thing, a problem with that. Oftentimes, because now we're being ruled by circumstances, This happened, therefore it must be God. 
The problem with that is that we live in a world today, right? And there's a ruler of this world, is there not? His name is Satan. <gasps> right? We often don't time in the world talk about Satan. In fact, there's a lot of people in the world don't even believe the devil even exists. And all they believe is God exists and he distributes good and he distributes bad. How many know that's just not true? There's a God and there's a devil. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness in this heavenly. There is a war that's going on in the heavenlies between God and the enemy, the devil, Satan. So he's there. He exists. So do you think it could be possible that I say, hey, make it so that so-and-so calls me up on the phone tomorrow, and then I will know that you, that, that you said this. How many know that could be God? How many know it could be the devil? Can the devil encourage people to make phone calls? He's not omniscient. No, he's not. But he, but he walks in the middle of situations and circumstances, and he creates circumstances oftentimes in our lives, and we follow after circumstances. It's true. Take a look at, th there's things that happen in our lives, and if we're not careful, we're going to be going, huh, maybe that situation, maybe that circumstance caused that to happen. Now, there's ways to know whether that situation or circumstances of God. How do I know that? What was the first two things I told you? Desire it, and what? And know the word. The word will always back you up. The word is your anchor. Period. End of story. And so that's how we begin to know those things. But if I just rely on situation and circumstances alone, that is not a good indicator that God is speaking to me. And I've got to be careful of that. Number, number, uh, oh, not, not, not number yet. Listening is not based on what? The practical. In other words, we just learned that story where Jesus was what? Jesus did what? What did he do to heal the blind man? He spit and dirt. How many know that that's not necessarily practical? So sometimes you may be asked to do something that is not necessarily practical. But just because it's not practical doesn't necessarily mean God's not saying it. So I've got to be careful of sometimes... It, how many know there's people that are very analytical and people who are not analytical? How many know we need both? Yeah. But how many know sometimes I can overanalyze something? Oftentimes, and, and so on the, on the same measure, for someone who just kind of flies by the seat of their pants, they can do that too and call it faith as well, Right? How many know we need both? But more importantly, what do we need? We need the word of God that's in our lives in order to show us this kind of stuff. Because sometimes what God may ask me to do may not be practical, but it may be something he's doing in my own life that I would be able to step out in faith with him, trusting him, and that he proves himself into doing those kind of things. Amen. Listening is not based on comfort. Because sometimes what he asks us to do it goes against the grain of who we think we are. And so it's not, always, it's not always comfortable, is it? And we've got to be in a place that's like, listen, this is a little less. I, we ask people to go on mission field all the time. And there's oftentimes when people go on the mission field, they are not comfortable at all going on the mission field. I remember this one year, there was this gal. I was doing missions with, with teenagers. And it was during the, during the big days where hairspray was a huge deal. And she had, and so our rule was that you pack it, you carry it. I, we didn't care what gender you were. You pack it, you carry it. Why? Because you're going on the mission field. You're going to have to figure this thing out, right? And so this gal gets off the airplane with two big, like, massive suitcases when they let you load them up, right? I mean, they were the big, tall suitcases. And, and they were, and she was walking, and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, you pack it, you carry it, right? And so you begin to learn what's necessary very quickly, right? And so she, she had one whole thing. So we did training for like a week. And uh, for the first, it was funny watching her because for the first couple of days, hairspray, makeup, all this kind of stuff. By the end of the week, hairspray, makeup was all out the window. And she packed really t small in order to be able to go over when we traveled overseas. It was pretty cool. And it's like, because you begin to start realizing that comfort isn't necessarily, right, hearing God's voice either. Because there may be some things, 
And training, how many know when you get trained in the things of God, how many know that's not comfortable either? And so we got to be careful of comfort, of the comfort level levels. So when you listen or hear God's voice and what he is saying, here's the one thing. We need to need to accept what he's saying to us. Mark 4.20 says this. The seed that fell, they're talking about the whole sower. Uh, it's the whole parable of the sower. He says the seed that fell on soil represent on the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and it produces a harvest of 30 60 and even 100 fold 100 times as much as had been planted so this word here to hear in the greek means to listen to comprehend to give heed in other words it's not going in one year and out the other it's actually going in and sticking okay in other words so when we hear and and then not only do we hear but what's the next word that it says to do hear and what accept. And so we need to hear and accept God's word. And so we receive it openly, right? We hear and accept. And so therefore, this word to accept means I receive it openly. And this Greek word means means to welcome with a personal interest. In other words, to take upon oneself. In other words, it becomes a part of who we are. In other words, so my, my hearing isn't just hearing only, but then I hear it and I do what with it? I accept it. I receive it. This is mine. God has given this to me to do or to say or whatever it may be. So we need to hear. We need to listen. We need to accept it. And we need to stay in faith as we begin to practice it. So point number two, point number one was to, was to take time to listen. Point number two is this, is to listen to peace. In other words, anybody ever have those times that you know that you know that you know that you know? You know what I'm talking about when I say that? I've had some people around me say, man, Dan, I don't know what you're talking about when you talk about listen to peace. And so I'm going to try to hopefully be able to explain that just a little bit here. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this, Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind's in Christ Jesus. So this word to transcend is this word uh, hooper echo, which means the word hooper means above, beyond, superior, something that is greater than anything you've ever experienced before. So this word to transcend is means it means to, and the word echo means to possess or to have or to hold. So in other words, that this peace is something that is greater than we've ever been able to experience. It's probably something that is not in our natural realm, when you've experienced peace, this transcends that. This is far, this is more superior than that. And we've got to be in a place and a position that, God, I want that peace. I want that knowing. It, in other words, and then it says, the peace that surpasses what? That transcends what? All understanding. In other words, it doesn't make sense to my mind why I'm so peaceful in the middle of this moment. In other words, God, you've asked me to go do X, but I don't get it. It doesn't make sense, but I have peace that I'm going to go do it, right? And so there's times that God will ask us to move or God will ask us to do, but in the times that he asks us to move and do, is there a peace there? Now, I've had times where it's like, I, I've tried to moving forward in some stuff, right? And so sometimes I test the waters, anybody, right? And so I'll, I'll start moving in a direction and I'm like, okay. And I'll take another step, okay. And then all of a sudden, something will just get all gummed up inside. And I'll just be like going, man, there's just no peace there at all. I just, I feel like something's just stirring inside me that's like, and so I'll back off and I'll back away from it, right? And it's like, because I want to hear God's voice better, right? And so it's like, part of hearing God's voice is beginning to start stepping into this. And do you, do you, when you step into this, does, so like, for instance, you know, the day I called Maria, and I said, hey, honey, the realtor says that he wants to sell our house. And, she, and within five minutes, she's like, yes. Why did she say yes, and why did I say yes? Because there was a piece that surpassed understanding. I didn't know what the next step was, but I knew this, I knew this was right. I, I, we'd been praying about this stuff for a long time anyway, so it's like when this, when this opportunity happened, it was like, okay, this, this, hit, this is right. Something's, something's right here. Now, yesterday when I was moving, it didn't feel... <laughs> just kidding. It was a lot of work. Um, so anyway, and thank you to everybody that helped. I really, 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 really appreciate that. That was huge. Um, so 
This peace is something that you, ha- that, you ha- that you have and hold, and it far outlasts and outweighs any other peace that you've ever experienced. In fact, it is incomprehensible to your fleshly understanding. It is beyond the flesh or what your, the world could produce, and it's beyond your emotions of what you would normally feel. That's what this peace is all about. Number three, desire. Now, this is a different type of desire. In other words, what has God put in your heart? If you're seeking God, one of the things he's going to do is he's going to put his desires in you. If you're pursuing after God, guess what you become more like? And so if I become more like him, guess what my desires become more like? Him. And so this is why it's important. Psalms 37, 4 says this, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. This word to take it, mean, it doesn't mean just like delight. You know, like sometimes the word delight is, is used in a, in a phrase like when you eat something, you delight in it. Hmm, that was really good, right? And you delight in it. But this word to delight in the Hebrew means soft delicate, dainty. Why would this word be used here? Take soft, delicate, dainty in the Lord. Right? Why would that? Well, it, 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 it means this. It means to be soft, pliable, and tender before God. Take delight in the Lord. Be soft, be pliable, be tender before the Lord. In other words, don't come with arrogance. Don't come, don't come with pride. Come and say, I am, I am putting that stuff down. Say, I, I'm, I'm coming, and, I'm just, and, and I know that there's stuff in me. I'm not 100%, and I, I just know there's stuff in me. So God, I just ask you, I give you permission to take that away. I, I surrender my life to you. And then he says, then he will give you the desires of your heart. That word desire means to petition. Then he will give you your petitions or your requests. Why is that? Because when, when, when will he give you that desire? If you come before him, humble and pliable, and he will give you that desire. That word pliable, that willingness to be worked, and talked about in Isaiah 64, 8. Oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We all are formed by hand. So in other words, it's like, God, I'm coming to you today. You am nothing asking you to mold me, make me pliable, make me more like you. I give you permission to do those kind of things. And as we give him permission to do that, he begins to do that. Then the desires, then his desires become your desires. And how many know that if you're praying his petitions, if you're praying his requests, Do you think that he will answer those requests? That's where this comes into play. So it's really important for us to be those that are pliable, those that are tender, those that are desiring the things of God. God, I want what's in your heart, what's been placed in there. When Maria and I, we had an opportunity to come, when we had the opportunity to come to move to Colorado, we'd been living in some places we didn't necessarily enjoy living, Arkansas. Um, they have ticks and chiggers and all sorts of stuff there, right? But you know what's so funny? Because I talk to people, and I talk to people, man, they desire, there's no other place that they would want to live other than Arkansas. And I'm like going, that is really cool, isn't it, right? Because I had a desire, there was something that was placed in us years ago, that one day, when we had the opportunity, we wanted to move to Colorado. And it's like, and so when, when the time came, it's like, hey, where would you plant a church? If you could plant a church, someone asked us, where, if you could plant a church anywhere, where would you, where would you plant a church? And I'm like, Marie and I looked at each other, well, Colorado, I mean, of course, you know, kind of thing. And then all this thing started coming together. We started praying through it and asking the Lord to open up those doors and to show us those directions and places and those steps. And, and sure enough, those things started coming together. And my job transferred us out here and paid for the whole thing. And we were able to live anywhere on the I-25 corridor. And we're like, where could we live? We could live anywhere on the I-25. How many know that God begins to start putting some of those desires in you? 
And it was crazy because I, we, uh, we, we traveled all the way up to Loveland. We traveled all the way down into Colorado Springs. And we were like traveling all up and down the I-25 corridor. And it was like a couple days before we were leaving, all of a sudden this door opens up and we traveled into Palmer Lake. And when we got to Palmer Lake, it was like something just dropped in us. And, we, and there was this peace that was like, and then I, I remember moving into the house in Palmer Lake. And as we moved into the house in Palmer Lake, there was this peace that just dropped in us and just said, you're home. And it was like, how many know that that Lord begins to order and direct your steps to those type of things? There's several things that end up coming into play here. And it's not just one thing that, 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 that happens in order to know that you're actually hearing God's voice. But here's the deal. I want what he desires. If all of a sudden you come in between his presence and you're like, man, God, I want what you want. I desire what you desire. He begins to place those things in you. You begin to start praying over those things. And guess what's going to happen? Those things are going to happen. It's pretty cool. Number four, be consistent. Be consistent and committed to the process. I would, I would talk to Fabian about small business stuff, and some of the things we talk about is like, he's like, listen, in small business, if you just keep consistent, eventually you win. It's, but it's the consistency piece, right? You can't change all over the place all the time. You got to just stay steady Eddie, right? And if you just stay steady, Eddie, it's like stuff will start changing around you. All of a sudden, you'll start building something. All of a sudden, something starts growing. But all of a sudden, it's kind of like what, uh, what she was talking about this morning, right? What Lindsay was talking about this morning. It's like, it's like yeah, well, that coffee beans f- five years down the line. You know? So you stay consistent. All of a sudden, you're going to see it. So Marie and I, we've been planting into ministries globally. We've been traveling overseas. We've been helping to build other people's churches and other people's um, communities and outreach and evangelism and all that kind of stuff. So I just know, guess what? It's going to happen right here in our own backyard. Why? Because we've been planting seed for that for years. And as a church, we continue to do that every year as a church. And so I know that it's going to come to pass right here in our own backyard as much as it's come to pass all these other different places that we've done it overseas, right? It's just be consistent. Be committed to the process. Don't give up. Practice it. Practice hearing God's voice, right? How do you practice? Well, I think I heard this. Well, test it. How do I test it? Well, I test it up against the word of God first, right? How else can you test it? I tell, I tell somebody else who's hungry, passionate, pursuer after God. I mean, that's another good way to test it, right? And then, listen, if it's something like giving somebody money, just do it. You can't go wrong there, right? I felt like I was supposed to give that person 20 bucks or whatever. You know, normally I give a $2 tip, you know. Well, now I gave a $20, right? It's like you just do that, right? And, and all of a sudden you begin to start, try it out, practice it, take it for a test drive, have fun with God in the process, right? How many know he's not going to be angry with you if you missed it? How many know that he can make up if, if you stepped out and you didn't do it right or do it well or whatever it might be? How many know he can make up, Right? Why? Because he's God. He, he, that's just who he is. He cares about us and loves us in that way. Galatians 6, 9 says this, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if what? If we don't give up. Be consistent in the process. Man, I, can't, I haven't been hearing God's voice well, but I keep doing it. I keep doing it. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to start hearing God's voice, and then you're going to hear it better. And then you're going to hear it better, right? How many of you think that's pretty cool, right? So just stay with it. Don't, don't get discouraged in the middle of the process. Sometimes we get into these places where we allow emotions so much to run us that what ends up happening is we get so tight that we get depressed and frustrated, all this kind of stuff. And all that kind of stuff, how many know anxiety can squash the voice of God? Right? Because my mind is only thinking on what? My mind is only thinking on the problem or the issue or whatever is at hand. And I've got to be able to release that, right? Get into his presence, be moldable, pliable, right? God, I give it to you. And then I release that presence. That, and then all of a sudden, that spirit of confusion lifts and you can hear God's voice. Because the spirit of confusion loves to come in and try to, and try to help, help us not hear God's voice. Psalms 27, 14, stay with God. And the Message Bible says this, take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again, stay with God. I love that in the Message Bible. That's what it says in the Message. And NLT is a little bit differently. Um, 1 Corinthians 9, 24, in, in the New Living Translation, don't you realize that in a race everyone 
runs, but only one person gets the prize. So what? Run in such a way to get the prize. So the point being is don't give up. Be consistent. Keep running. Keep striving. Hey, I might not be the fastest runner right now, but I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to keep practicing. I'm going to still be diligent. And guess what's going to happen? I'll get better and better and better and better at it. Amen? Last point. Number five. Hang out, surround yourself with spiritually like-minded mentors. Surround yourself with passionate, hungry, God-seeking people. You want to hear God's voice better? Surround yourself with people that are hearing God's voice. Surround your people that are seeking after God with their whole heart, right? And guess what? He's a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. So hang out with people who are diligently seeking him. Proverbs 12, 15 says this, Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. Listen, there's something about having a council of people around you. There's something about having people around you that you can, that you can kind of rub off on, right? Iron sharpens iron. So what? One man sharpens another. There's something about getting around other people, like-minded individuals, and rubbing off on each other. Sometimes when we get alone, we get weird. Just saying it. You go it alone, you're going to get weird. Why? Because there's not that tension. You're not rubbing off on each other, right? And why? Because I'm always right in my own mind. <laughs> then I get around somebody else. I say something. I do something. And all of a sudden, I'm like, uh, okay, that wasn't right, right? But in my own mind, it was right at the time. And how many know that when we get around each other, we can rub off on each other and help each other out? So don't go it alone. Sometimes he'll use people to speak through that maybe you don't even know. Anybody ever had that happen before? Someone will say something to you and it prompts something inside you. Now, here's the deal with that. You just don't take that and go, oh, that's what it is. What do you do? What are the two things I told you? Desire and what? Truth. And make sure that you line it up against the Word of God. And also make sure then there's something that's going to happen to you. Line it up with peace, right? That peace that surpasses all understanding. You're going to know whether or not it's of God or is not of God. Something's going to go off inside you, and you're going to know. Okay? Also, 2 Corinthians 13.1, this verse, 2 Corinthians 13.1, actually comes from Deuteronomy 19.15. And Deuteronomy 19, and, and, and 2 Corinthians 13.1, just read that one. This is the third time I'm coming to you to visit you, Paul is saying, and as the scriptures say, the facts of every case must be established by the testimony of what? Two or three witnesses. The original verse is in Deuteronomy 19.15. It says, you must not convict anyone of a crime on the testimony of only one witness. The facts of the case must be established by what? The testimony of what? Two or three. So that's why people, surrounding yourself with people, you're going to have people around you hang out with some people, men's coffee, women's coffee. You know, there's different groupings of people that you hang out with, and all of a sudden you're going to throw something by them, and they're going to be like, yep, that makes sense. Yep, that lines up with the Word of God. They're going to help you. Help. We need to help each other in this process. How many would agree with that? We need each other, and, and we need to be able to hang out with each other. God never intended us for us to go this Christian life by ourselves. We need each other. So pull people around you. The prophetic, there's people that will speak to you prophetically, and that's awesome. But guess what? It will line up with the word, if it's of, of him. It will line up with your spirit, that peace that surpasses all understanding thing that's going to happen inside you. And you can also speak it to, to a group of Bible-believing, hungry, passionate pursuers of God, and it will line up with them as well. Okay? Because the word is the word is the word. It, it will line up. It, you won't have to try to tweak it and go, well, maybe what was being said was, but, you know, listen, you don't have to try to massage it to try to make it work, okay? So quit trying to massage things to try to make it work, all right? Some people have asked me about dreams. So what do you think about dreams? I said, yeah, you know, God can speak through dreams. But again, it's got to match up with the word of God. If I speak it to two or three, right? If there's a piece that's ha happening, right? So all those kind of pieces all start coming together and it enables me to know that I am actually hearing God's voice. So today, I want us to desire to hear God's voice because it's imperative for me, it's imperative for you, it's imperative for your families, it's imperative for your friends, it's imperative for your coworkers, it's imperative for this community that we hear God's voice. 
And it's imperative that not only do we hear God's voice, but then we act on God's voice. So let us be those that listen and get into his presence, that we're humble, we're pliable, we're moldable, and we allow him to speak to us. If we will do that, but Dan, I, I, got, in, I got in his presence once, and I haven't heard anything. Listen, be consistent, keep going for it, do it again, do it again. Desire him more than anything, right? I'm not coming to him to get anything. I'm coming to him to know him so that I can make his name known. I'm coming to him because I want, I, I want, to, be able to, I want to be able to be in his presence and go, God, I love you. I think, you know, and, and understand what that's really like. And, and then it's at that point, something just triggers, something happens. And it's like, and all of a sudden, there's, you'll be able to start hearing God's voice on certain situations and circumstances that are going on in your life. Okay? So stand to your feet with me. So do me a favor, close your eyes. And the reason why I ask you to do that is just so that you're not distracted by everybody around you, but you're, but you're at a place where you can just listen and you can just hear. So Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And if you desire to hear God and you want more truth, you want more word in you, would you do me a favor and just lift up your hand? Father, you see us all across this room with our hands lifted up. And God, we desire, we want more of you in our lives. We want the truth in you, uh, of you. We want to be able to speak life and speak truth. God, we, we have a desire. We are, we're hungry because we know that we can't go it alone. We realize that we can't just kind of push through this life. and But that we need to hear your voice as we go through this life because as we do so it, we can make the right decisions and we can love on the right people and we can help others that are in need and we can take time out of our schedule and we realize that hearing your voice isn't all based on emotion, it's not based on situations and circumstances, it's not based on us being comfortable but that it's just based upon being in your presence So God, I just ask that today, that right now, I would ask of you right now, if you guys, if you have something, maybe it's a decision you're trying to make, maybe it's a, something you're trying to hear God's voice on right now in your life or in your family, would you bring that petition before him right now? God, we just give you these things, Lord, what's happening in our families, what's happening in our life and situations and circumstances that are going on around us. God, we just give this to you. We lift these things up to you right now. And God, I just ask that you would help us to hear your voice and to hear it clearly right now in Jesus' name. God, I just ask that you speak to us and speak to us clearly, God. And we bind that spirit of confusion and say you must go in the name of Jesus. And that, God, that we are not limited to our situations and our circumstances to hear you, but, God, that we are able to hear your voice through your peace, we're able to hear your voice through just, just being in your presence. We're able to hear your voice through the word of God that's established in our hearts. And God, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would just speak to us. And that we would hear you and hear you clearly, God. I need you, God. I need you so much. I can't go it alone. And God, I just ask you to establish people around us, friends and people in the faith that who love you and are passionate pursuing after you that we can speak to and talk to and share with and that you would confirm your word through them as well. God, I ask you to cause us to be those people that are hungry and thirsty for the things of you, that we're hungry for your word, that just cause us to, to desire that more than the desires that are in the world, more than the earthly passions that are out there that we wouldn't get ourselves ensnared or entangled with those things, with the world, but God, that we would truly just be hungry for you. 
God, we want you to use us here in this room to make impact in our families. We want us to, you to use us here in this room to make impact in, with our friends and on our jobs, in our communities. God, we desire for this region to be transformed and changed in Jesus' name. And God, we know that you want to use us to make that happen. And we're grateful and we're honored that you would want to use us in that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tomorrow, uh, don't forget about the uh, Memorial Day picnic, Dirty Woman Park. You'll see trailers out there. We'll have some flags up out there as well. And uh, what time? 11. 11. It starts at 11. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of games, a lot of eating, a lot of food. Um, also today, as you guys are leaving out of here, if you know some people really well in the room, please do not talk to them. And if you don't know some people really well, please make sure you go find them and talk with them and just love on them and encourage them. Would you do that? Have an awesome day.